We are going to visit the planet Earth, the third rock from the Sun. It is the Goldilocks planet. It's not too hot or too cold, but just right to bear life. It is also sometimes known as the Blue Planet and often looks like a blue marble because of the combined effect of clouds, oceans and land. The Earth has a life-supporting atmosphere. It keeps it safe from harmful radiation. It also helps regulate the planet's temperature, keeping it just right for life and oceans of liquid water. The Sun emits a vast amount of electromagnetic energy. Most of the Sun's energy reaches the Earth as visible light. Luckily for us, the atmosphere filters out most of the harmful radiation with only a small amount of ultraviolet getting through. Much of this electromagnetic energy is absorbed by the sea and the land. Some land and the oceans absorb the sun's energy, but other areas, for example ice, reflect the energy away. The sun's higher frequency radiation, mainly visible light in UV, reaches the Earth's surface. The surface absorbs the energy and warms up. It radiates some of this energy back as lower frequency infrared radiation. Some of this radiation is lost to space. Some is absorbed by certain gas molecules. The atmosphere is composed of a mixture of gases. 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. All other gases are in the remaining 1%. It is this 1% that is the most important in temperature regulation and includes carbon dioxide, water vapour and methane. Nitrogen and oxygen are largely unaffected by the sun's high frequency radiation and the lower frequency infrared radiation. The more complex molecules of water vapour, carbon dioxide and methane are affected by the lower frequency infrared radiation. These molecules will vibrate, twist and rotate in response to the frequency of the infrared radiation. Agitated molecules collide with others and pass on some of this energy. It is not a static system. Some of this energy is re-radiated in random directions by the gas molecules and again some is lost to space. The net effect of these processes is to slow down the loss of heat from the Earth. So heat that could travel out into space gets temporarily trapped in the Earth's lower atmosphere, keeping the planet warmer than it would otherwise be. This is a natural system known as the greenhouse effect. As the Earth rotates, the sun appears to move across the sky. The intensity of sun's energy changes with the angle of the sun throughout the day. We can easily see this by shadows and on sundials. Because of the curvature of the Earth, the Sun's energy hits the equator more directly than it does at the poles. At the equator, the energy is more intense and concentrated. At the North and South Poles, the Sun's rays are spread out over a much greater area. Therefore, the energy is less intense. That's why the equator is much warmer than the icy poles. This difference in warming caused by variations in the sun's energy produces powerful air and water currents in the atmosphere and oceans that helps to circulate heat and regulates the overall average temperature on Earth. Through this process, the planet never gets massively too hot or too cold. The daily extremes of Earth's temperatures are small compared with planets without an atmosphere. Mercury and Mars and even our own Moon have huge temperature changes between day and night. The Earth's axis tilts 23.5 degrees from the vertical. This also causes variations in the intensity of the energy hitting the Earth's surface. As the planet orbits around the Sun, it tilts away and towards it. This is what causes the seasons. Summer comes to the Northern Hemisphere when the North Pole angles back towards the Sun and then it is winter in the Southern Hemisphere which is tilted away from the Sun at this time. 
Winter in the Northern Hemisphere is caused by the North Pole being angled away from the Sun. At the same time, it is summer in the Southern Hemisphere, which is angled towards the Sun. The Earth's position within the Solar System and the interaction between the solid Earth, its atmosphere and its oceans is a complex, delicate balance. Small changes in any of these systems can have a devastating effect on the Earth. There is increasing amounts of man-made chemicals and large volumes of carbon dioxide entering the atmosphere, adding to the natural greenhouse effect. Changes directly caused by humans are altering natural processes in ways not seen in the long history of the Earth. What happens next? will depend on the actions of every human being.